الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبت في الله continue on in our study of an-nasiha by Sheikh and Sheikh Ibrahim hafizallah ta'ala we reach the conclusion of the treaties and the sheikh is mentioning some uh, very important advices that he found is to be a form of uh, cure for the sickness that has befallen many of the youth of Ahl Sunnah and you'll find it everywhere and I can give you some examples you 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 can travel and I've traveled to Indonesia I've been to uh, uh, of course Yemen and uh, also Ethiopia extensively and you'll find the same problems between Ahl Sunnah and you'll hear things from Kenya you'll hear things from other parts of Africa we already know how Morocco and Algeria are and here from everywhere from Sweden to uh, the United States to wherever you'll see fitna unfortunately uh in division from Denmark to uh other Scandinavian countries you hear oh we have people like this uh, in Germany we have hadadia and we have this so you'll see the fitna uh and the intishar the spreading of this fitna is around the world and it only makes ahl sunnah look weak and it makes people run from the da'wah to ahl sunnah they run and are scared of the word salafi salafi for most people it means <laughs> in the most politest of terms it means something uh that you should flee from okay some of the people they have the most horrid descriptions of salafis and salafi uh communities and that's because of the discord between ahl sunnah and also the way that the tarbiya of many of the youth and unfortunately even some scholars that have propagated this kind of uh harsh treatment which is departed from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in fact caused fitna around the earth plain and simple and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide them i mean and guide us to the haq because we have a responsibility to carry the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because uh you know if you're not a part of producing khair and a part of that uh cure then perhaps you will be left as a part of the sickness and Allah will raise up others to take your place and we see we we should have no doubt about the minhaj of ahl sunnah the methodology of the salaf salih uh in that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la tazal taifatun min ummati zahirin ala al-haqq حتى يأتيهم أمر الله وهم على ذلك. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said, and you'll find the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, there won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the truth uh, until the hour is established. And in other narration, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned, لا يضرهم من خالفهم ولا من خذلهم حتى تكون مساء. That there won't, uh, you know, no one can harm them. even if they differ and belittle them until the hour is established and so that lets us know that should be a hadith that gives us hope even when when things sometimes see, seem dismal and people are attacking uh the ulama of ahl sunnah and mistakes are being made and people are discrediting the ulama and discrediting the duaat and this and that and the other and all the fitna that goes on we should return to the book and the sunnah and rectify ourselves and also remember that uh ahl sunnah is the ghuraba that they are the uh you know they're like travelers and they are the uh you know they are rare in the dunya so the sheikh is giving us some good advice to end the treaties he says firstly my brothers on the sunnah no if you are truly from the people of the sunnah then you will never be harmed by the plots of the people so this is very much in accordance with what I, we just said none of their accusations of you being a mubtadi'a can remove remove you from the sunnah and if you are deviant and stray and i ask allah to give you refuge from being such then none of the praises of the people will benefit you with allah regardless of whether they consider you to be from the people of the sunnah or they extol you or attribute initiative and falsified nicknames to you for indeed Allah knows your true reality just as well as you know it yourself so i warn you against deceiving yourself and sufficient 
enough for you as an admonishment is the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he gave to Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah and the hadith of the three who will be the first to be burnt in the fire on the day of judgment may Allah give both me and you refuge from this so the Shaykh is giving us as a part of that advice letting us know this is something very important is never forget no one can really take you off the sunnah. I mean, maybe a group of individuals can say you're a muftidiyah and people can discredit you. But no one can really remove you from the sunnah, nor can no can someone really, even through their praise, no matter how much they praise you, can make you uh, to be firm on the sunnah. You know, that hidayah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your reality is with you, between you and Allah azza wa jal, and your practices and your aqidah and your methodology for understanding Islam and propagating Islam. That is regarding your personal reality. So even if people claim that you're a mubtadiyah from the mubtadiyah themselves or from other people who classify themselves or claim to be, or perhaps they are from Ahl Sunnah, even if they speak about you, that doesn't take you off the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. So it's very important to be firm. And this is also in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I don't know if he mentions it here, but he mentions Yes, it is the hadith, uh, the translator put this hadith, uh, uh, the hadith that's in Bukhari. That he said, no, that if the Prophet ﷺ said, no, that if the whole nation were to gather together to benefit you with anything, they would only benefit you with that what Allah has already decreed for you. And if they were to gather together to harm you with anything, they would only harm you with what Allah has already decreed for you. The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. So that's a jazallah khairan to the translator <coughs> to for uh, putting this in the footnote, the hadith that the sheikh was mentioning, because that's the hadith that came to my mind. And here it is from the translator. And then he mentioned another hadith. And that was what the Shaykh also made ishara or pointed to the hadith of Ibn Abbas, which is the hadith uh, in the awwal al nas yuqda alayhi yawm al qiyama rajal al ustushira. Uh, in the verily, the first three on the day of judgment who will be uh, thrown in the fire is a man who, the first one is a man who was martyred. And of course, the second one is the uh, scholar or the, the, the alam or the, uh, the one who teaches the Quran. And the second one is the, uh, the third one is the one who is uh, uh, a, um, uh, a person who, who spends wealth and gives charity and spends it on many things of khair. You know, they spend the wealth in many positive, good projects. But however, what, what did they all have in common and what was the shahid of the hadith is their intention was to gain the praise and the uh, applause of the people and to gain fame, and which they did, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, as the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah will say on the day of judgment, and that they you did, you gained that fame, you gained that praise, uh, and then he will throw them in the fire. Why? Because they didn't have a khlas. They did the mujahid, he fought, and he said he fought for the sake of Allah, but he really did it for fame. And he became famous. The people praised his name and he was killed. But he would be raised in front of Allah and then thrown in the fire. Can you imagine that for one of the highest deeds you could do? And then the, the alam who taught people around the world, people from here in the Shark and the Gharb, people from the West and the East, from around the world, benefit from this individual, this student of knowledge, this alam, this uh, qari, this reciter of the Quran. But he did it so that the people will praise him and thrown in the fire. And likewise, the one who spent so much, so his left didn't, you know, his 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 left hand didn't know the difference between his right, or, uh, you know, he's just spending, spending his wealth in good, building places of of, of the sunnah, building wells for the poor, feeding the poor, starting businesses that others can benefit from, you know, all kind of good projects and khair, all the different ways of khair, as is mentioned in the hadith. That the man he'll be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Ma taraktu min shayin, Ma taraktu min sabilin, and to hibbu and yanfaka fiha ilan faka fiha luck. That I didn't leave off a path 
of good except that I spit that you would please that would please you except that I did it except that I spin it that way on the poor and the, the people who needed this the people who needed that he spent build massage it built houses of worship of Elijah alone did all kind of good but he did it so the people would praise him and then the Shaykh mentions the second point. He said, Know that the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, those who are firmly grounded in knowledge, did not reach the level of eminence and leadership in the religion except by tawfiq of Allah and by being patient while having true yaqeen, true certainty. Uh, about Allah, as he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we made from amongst them leaders giving guidance under our command when they were patient and used to believe in our ayat with certainty. So it takes a strong iman to weather the storm. So here the shaykh is saying the first thing is have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second point is to, uh, you know, have certainty uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have yaqeen, you know, that and, and in your belief with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah will raise you up. And he said, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, with patience and certainty, you will achieve leadership in the religion. So that when a person is patient, and they're on certainty, meaning that they're patient with all the various forms of patience, and they're certain in their belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and have sincerity to Allah, that Allah will raise them up. They'll gain that leadership. Even if they don't want to be leaders, Allah's going to raise them because that's what sincere and righteous leadership is built upon that. He said, in actuality, yaqeen, certainty, is strength and valor in one's knowledge, which is founded upon sound evidence and understanding of the text from the Quran and the Sunnah. This, of course, is the exact opposite of what some of the students of knowledge today are pleased with for themselves. The reality of the matter is that the is that they only share is that the only knowledge that they have is to blindly follow a particular scholar or a student of knowledge and then claim that the truth is with him absolutely. And no one understands the sunnah except him. Meaning that some of the people, instead of having yaqeen with Allah Azza wa Jal, they have yaqeen and they've gained something of knowledge and all they do is call you to taqlid. Think about all those people, unfortunately, wallahu musta'an, in the name of Salafiya, in the name of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, but yet they copy the Sufis and want you to take from only one or two or three scholars, and 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 that if that scholar makes a judgment and another scholar or ten other scholars judge differently, they want you to take from that one scholar as if his kalam in a, in and of itself is a hujja. But this is not the case. And look at this, Sheikh's been talking about this stuff for years. Our ulama have been aware and talking and discussing about this fitna for years, but we still have people who are new on the scene, young youth who are propagating the same stuff. I've read, I've seen uh, things that have come to me through messages and stuff from some of the uh, forums, uh, electronic forums and stuff like that on the internet. And I'm amazed at what some of the youth, especially those youth that are new to the da'wah, the blind following they give to some of the du'a, not even to the ulama. They say, Abu so-and-so said, uh, Abu so-and-so said, this one said, they said, we're going to kick you off the forum if you don't believe like these five brothers. Literally, these kind of statements, taqlid, of people who may be not even known really for knowledge. This is shameful. This is a sickness. This is a filthy disease. And this is not from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But we already gave you ample adilla. Just go back to the statement of Imam Malik, in which he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, that everyone... Uh, gets something correct and makes a mistake, except the 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 the, uh, the inhabitant of that grave. And he was talking about. He pointed to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. So no one, the truth is not with no one. As the Salaf used to say, "La yurf al haq bi rijal, walakin yurf al rijal bil haq." We don't know the truth by men, but we know the men by the truth. Meaning that we judge. Our shayukh, our ulama, and everyone on the scale of the truth, the, 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 the mizan, the, the scales of the truth. Not, we don't judge the truth by them, meaning, oh, Sheikh so and so said this ruling. That's it. 
No more discussion. It's like as if it's revelation. No, that's completely incorrect. And this is exactly what Ahl Sunnah has always warned against. So how is it then you could go around and do those same wicked practices? This is, I've seen it countless times. I've seen it thousands of times. I've seen it personally, been in rooms and seen some of the statements that have been said, some of the actions of individuals. So these are not uh, made up scenarios. How many of us can, can testify to this wicked practices of taqlid and the damage it has done to the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah? The, the, the da'wah is going to go forward with or without us. We'll be buried in our grave and Ahlul Sunnah will still be there. There won't cease to be a group from my nation that's on the truth. Ahlul Sunnah is still going to be mojud even if you practice innovative practices and claimed it was from Salafiyah and claimed it was from the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. sahih. The Shaykh then said, he said, Sabr, patience, meaning uh, this is a, still part of that second principle because it's yaqeen and sabr, patience. He said, patience is fortitude and endurance in seeking knowledge, in addition to acting upon the knowledge and occupying himself with it day and night. This is contrary to those who have a weak determination to do so, and they find themselves content with leisure and repose by which one gives in to his own desires to the extent that he has no interest in seeking knowledge altogether or to exemplify it in his behavior. So this is very important. We have to practice, and that takes patience in and of itself to practice what you preach, to practice the principles of Ahlul Sunnati wa Jama'ah, to practice the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he mentions the third piece of advice. He says, no, that takfir, tibdir, and tafsik is the sole right of Allah. This is what we try to tell the takfiris, but they can't accept that. For them, they just look at the ayat and they make a hukum and they believe that they're, it's just amazing. It goes against kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf as -salih. They cut and paste and they spread wickedness throughout the earth and they make their whole deen based upon judging others. That's the whole, their usul, and that's the usul of the khawarij. Is, you know, is basically they're making a hukum on, on the on al akhirin. The, 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 the uh, original takfiris, which is the Khawarij, used to make uh, these hukum, these ahkam, the, or these judgments on the Sahaba Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in. They used to make takfir of the Sahaba. Can you imagine to be so, they say, hey, they're holding up the Quran and, and saying, you know, that verily the judgment is only for Allah. Yes, you're, you're, you're this is truthful what you said. And this is how Ibn Abbas Radiallahu and others, uh, you know, debated them with this and said, hey, your understanding is incorrect. Are you saying that men have no place in making the judgments? Because otherwise everything would just be black and white like a computer. And this is exactly the methodology of the Khawarij and is exactly the methodology of those who do tabdir in the same way. Everything is so black and white. Mubtadi'ah, he's with us. This one is a Sunni. Khatta. You know, there's ahkam, there's rulings, there's principles, and we have to look, as I said countless times, which is a principle of the ulama, al ibra bi haqaiq li bi musamiyat. The reality of something is is uh, in its substance, not in its name. So it doesn't matter how many times you call yourself Salafi. It doesn't matter how many times you call yourself Sunni. It doesn't matter how many times you call yourself Athari. It doesn't matter how many times you call yourself this or that or, or whatever. Your reality is what you practice and understand and propagate and believe, not in your name. And since it is now the Adhan is coming, then we will stop for now until the uh, next uh, sitting, which will probably be the final, the end of the treaties. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم